Hi, I'm Sarah from Heirloom Creations. Do you know we feature a ruler every single month? You have got to check out our blog and our YouTube channel for all the videos that we have done already on many different rulers. This month, we are featuring the Rapid Fire Lemoyne Star Ruler. Now behind us is a pattern called Crown Jewels. Now you recognize that eight-pointed star as usually cutting diamonds and uh, not so much. Now once again, whenever I see a new ruler, I kind of find myself going, I wonder how that works because it makes no sense just by looking at it. But these directions are finding you the perfect way to make anywhere from a three-inch finished Lemoyne Star all the way up to a 12 inch, this being a nine inch Lemoyne star, but the directions are perfect. Uh, Deb Tucker is the designer and she does amazing work. So my sewing hat off to you, Deb, for all your designing for this ruler and all your patterns. So let's take a look at how you can make all these different sizes of Lemoyne stars. Along with crown jewels, here are a few other patterns that we have in our store right now called Pop Stars and Trade Winds, all using this Lemoyne Star ruler. You're really gonna find it, you're gonna love it. And it really makes you turn out perfect every single time. A couple things when I start with a new ruler, I always add the true grips to the back of them, make it so it's a non-slip ruler and make it easy for when you're trimming all your pieces down. In with the ruler are great instructions. I'm gonna walk you through what it takes to use this ruler and get perfect stars every time. The chart up here will guide you for the strip length that you're gonna work with for each of the star sizes you're desiring and how to get everything set up. Also, um, that way you don't have lots of extra cuts and leftover pieces that you're not using. We are labeling these strips. I've got two background colors and two colors for the stars. These are star colors. Just to give you an idea, this is cut four inches. This is cut two and a half. We are making a nine inch finished star. I've labeled the top of A top and B top and then measured down about the same distance as it is wide as a starting point because this piece needs to get sewn over here and this one needs to get sewn over here. And it's one way that we can keep track of everything and then everything is gonna turn out just perfect. So I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine and sew these strips together. Step one is to do the strips. Step two is pressing. This is crucial to help keep all the seams always nesting together as we bring our star pieces together. So I relayed this out, A and B, and then these pieces are all pressed this direction. So th this is pressed to the dark, and this one is pressed to the light. But that's okay, because watch. The next part we're gonna do is we're gonna put B on the bottom, right side up, and then A on top of it, right side down. We're gonna nest these seams together right along this seam. And we're gonna start by and cut our strips out. Make sure those are all filling where they should be. Great. Okay, on the Lemoyne Star Ruler, there is a dotted line on each of the sides here. One thing nice about the directions is if you are left-handed, there are directions for both right and left-handing cutting, so this turns out great, and the dotted line is also on the other side too. So first off, we need to get a 45 degree angle cut going here. We're gonna go ahead and line up the dotted line along the seam that you can see right here. We're gonna go ahead and put our ruler, yes, you will need an extra ruler for this, to get that straight edge. So this is gonna cut our 45 degree angles that we need for these stars. After we have made our first cut, the distance or width of the strip for the stars is this, the amount that you're gonna cut. So mine was two and a half inches, so I'll just go ahead and cut two and a half inch cuts from here on out all the way down the strip. I am gonna kind of slide these apart as I go because the next step is quite ingenious and really is what makes this Lemoyne star go together without any <laughs> major issues because this is also a quilt pattern or a block that as you stitch it, we have fudge factor. That means when we get to the end of this, we can trim it up. And it is really cool how you see this all come together. So this is our step three, part A. All right, then this is our leftover. Notice we only need four. We need a total of eight, but our other piece is right underneath this. As we go ahead and kind of just separate these a little bit, they will let you kind of see what we're gonna do next. We're gonna put our ruler right with this little point, the point at the end of your seam allowance. 
go ahead and do this one here first, just kind of over here. And it doesn't really have to be too perfect, but if you did want to kind of just keep an eyeball up here at the top of your strip, you're really just slicing. We need to slice off the triangles at the end. Now, those triangles are important. We're going to use those. That's part of your next piece that you're going to sew onto these pieces. Let me go ahead and get these cut. Last one over here cut. Okay, so next, what we're gonna do is go and sew. You're gonna open up your pieces, and we need, we get all our little triangles going here. And take our triangle pieces, and we are going to sew them to the end. Notice how much bigger they are than, than the edges. And this is that tr um, the fudge factor, the trim factor that we have going on here. But you're gonna go ahead and do this to all the pieces. So whichever, since we have two different color backgrounds, whichever one you've decided to put with which blocks, go ahead and do that. This one, go ahead and do those. All right, time to go sew. Once again, the key is in the pressing. Here's what we're looking at. So we added the little triangle onto the side and it doesn't have to be perfect. Notice even this one, I have a small uh, point up here and a bigger point down here. But look, can you see the star starting to come out? It's gonna be pretty neat. When you flip this over, what you're gonna notice is when you press, all your seams are gonna always kind of fan out across the way. This is gonna make it so when we go to put everything together, they always nest. And I've noticed the only time I've had to pin my pieces together are really when I'm going and putting the final four quadrants together with this particular block. But now we're ready to do the trimming. So first off, you're gonna lay down a single block. And on the Lemoyne Star ruler, you're gonna find all your numbers. So this is a nine inch block that we were working with. So then I'm gonna follow the nine inch dotted line and put it right along the diamond. See is that? Notice how much I'm gonna be able to trim off and even up these pieces. Now I've noticed too, if I get a little wiggle at the top, I kinda of need to hold my finger and make sure that really is getting a nice clean point there. Don't worry about these outside edges. That's when we get the whole block all put together and trimmed up. Those will go away then, but we only need to focus on the center um, connecting areas right now. Go ahead, trim, trim. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do all of our pieces. After doing all your trimming, the next part is assembling. And as you can see, they're easily gonna come together in little blocks. As you put your pieces together, you're gonna notice because of our special pressing at the beginning, those edges are gonna nest beautifully together. You're gonna to find that, um, actually, I did not pin even at this point because the uh, one I always like on the bottom is there and it kind of helps push those edges together when you start stitching from the center point on out. Now, a couple different ways of putting this together. As you can see, there's your regular star, but on some of the patterns, they actually are having you use more of the like larger triangle. So that's one of your blocks. So instead, you can go ahead and start to stitch more of these triangles together and then assemble accordingly. Now, when you actually go to put your blocks together, you're gonna find you, you could still press your seams to all in one side. You'll notice that, do you see all the seams go in the spiral direction so you can continue? But sometimes getting that last seam to really lay flat, you can press open the seams, your choice on how you wanna go ahead and do that. Once you have everything together, do you notice how much extra fabric is extending beyond these little points? By having so much extra, that's gonna allow you that area to make this block perfect. You're gonna come and put your square ruler on there and measure out a, a quarter inch and, make, and then go ahead and square up your block, making it the perfect size. Another thing that you have with the pattern and, and the ruler, let me talk about this part here. Everybody asks, well, what's the other part of the ruler for? Up here is if you want to fussy cut specialty items to land in the star points, you're gonna pre-cut those diamonds individually, and then the directions show you how to go ahead and add the other two kind of triangles to either of those sides, and then use the, the ruler as we did to square them up. Another great little practice piece also comes with the pattern. The Lemoyne Star Constellation is a great way to test 
all the different sizes and really learn how to master this ruler. Wouldn't it be fun to add some extra special blocks in maybe cornerstone areas or at the edge of your quilts for the next project? Instead of just a plain square in the corner, let's add a Lemoyne star. 